Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at several cases of police misconduct, including an incident where an elderly homeowner was aggressively detained and arrested for no valid reason by officers who failed to gather proper evidence, essentially violating her constitutional rights. In this first incident, we're going to take a look at a case where two officers show up at a residential home unannounced and tase a man and his mother for no reason. On January 27, 2020, in Laramie County, Wyoming, Sheriff Deputies Jason Gillett and Ryan Lee arrived at Devin Bryan's home in the middle of the night after receiving a tip that he was trying to end himself. How the officers handled the following conversation, though, was far from professional. So, Ryan? She got a, she got an email from him for, um, at six o'clock this evening. She's only just woke up and she's only just read it. That he's using again and he's going to cut himself and he doesn't, sorry, he has cut himself, but he doesn't think that he can get back from it this time. Sheriff's hey. office. Hey, how you doing? Hey, sir, get, how we get in there? Deputy Jiller with the Sheriff's Department. Yeah. Partner Deputy Lee. Is Devin here? Yeah, he's here. Do you mind if we speak to him real quick? He's not in any trouble. We just we we just want to check on his welfare. Okay. Yeah. Here, sir. Let's deal with this. Someone come What's that? Who? Somebody just walked that way. They were walking up the street. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? So I got called from the um, estranged wife, estranged girlfriend. Ah, uh, yeah, my ex-wife. Okay, so she's concerned that you're harming yourself and you sent her an email earlier? Yeah, uh, I, had, I, had, I had sent her something. Uh, it wasn't earlier, it was, I think it was like two days ago. Two days ago, um, okay. I had been drinking and was just kind of not in a, a good mood. Okay. And But I mean, I'm, I'm fine, I just, I didn't even realize I had sent it. I saw that I sent her the email. All right, man, do me yeah, a favor, yeah, just yeah. Let's, let me have a look at your arms. No, I don't, I don't, okay. I don't need All to right. look at anything. All right. I know, I know you're just here to... I'm just here to make sure... And, but two, I'm good. two days ago doesn't concern me, okay, bro? Because two no, days ago, you, and you, you stood here talking to me. Yeah. So I, I just want to look... If they're old, I'm going to get in my car and leave you alone. And that's okay. I don't, I I don't, I don't want to show you anything, and I don't need to. Yes, you actually but have to no, at this point. No, Because right now, based on everything, we could take you to the hospital right at this moment. No, no. Although officers may be allowed to take a person into protective custody and transport them to a local mental health center or a crisis stabilization program, that is only allowed when they observe the person conducting himself in a manner that causes the law enforcement officer to reasonably believe that they are mentally ill or are suffering from chemical dependency. However, since the deputy himself stated that Mr. Bryan seemed healthy and fine, there was no need to take him into custody for further examination. Despite this, the officers persisted in detaining the civilian, resulting in an unprecedented situation. Then no, that's okay, but uh, okay, go ahead you, guys can, you guys can come, come right on. back with a warrant. Don't resist. Yes. Out. Don't pull. No. Don't. 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 Get off me. Now. I don't have Get to do shit. Stop. Step out. He you Stop, can't make you me guys. do anything. We you don't have a warrant. Bam! Step back! No! Hey. In the absence of any warning, the officers began forcibly removing Mr. Bryant from his home without any probable reason or cause. It's important to note that, other than a mental health crisis, the only times an officer can enter your home or remove you from it are 1. Flight from a felony, where if the police witness you commit a felony, such as buying or selling drugs, and you run from them into your home, then they are permitted to follow you into your home. 2. Plain view. If the police come to your door and see drugs in the home when the door is open, then they may enter without a warrant. 3. Consent. If you or someone else who has dominion and control over the residence allow cops to come into the house when they come to your door, then you have consented to the police being in your home. 
4. Exigent Circumstances An emergency situation where a person may be in imminent danger or evidence may be destroyed. Since none of the above conditions applied, the officers were not allowed to remove Mr. Bryan from his home. However, ignoring their wrongdoings, the officers continued to do so. No, hey, get off stop. my lawn! Dude, you're right. Get stop! stop. You stop! It's clear by this point that the officers had broken multiple rules and department policies. According to the ACLU's taser policy, a verbal warning of the intended use of the taser should precede its application, unless it would otherwise endanger the safety of officers or when it is not practical due to the circumstances. The purpose of the warning is to provide the individual with a reasonable opportunity to voluntarily comply and to provide other officers and individuals with a warning that a taser may be deployed. By not giving a verbal warning, the officer not only violated his department's policies, but also violated the victim's fourth constitutional right, which states, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Furthermore, despite the victim and his mother already outside the house, the officer proceeded to tase both individuals. This action constituted the use of excessive force, which violates the ACLU's policy that states, the taser is a use of force and is to be used only when necessary to overcome resistance while effecting an arrest, preventing an escape, in self-defense, or in defense of another person from physical harm, and in accordance with this department's use of force policy. Oh, stay away! Stay <laughs> away! Mom, are you stay back! Mom, are you okay? Stop. Hey, what? Okay, I, yeah! <laughs> God. Hey, hey, my, the, Wait, my mom didn't do anything, hey. Look, it's my shoulder. Okay, I used to cut on my shoulder. You want to see? Uh, I'll show you. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Take a seat right here. Uh, I'm sorry. I... Take a seat down. Here. I need some will, will you? I'm trying to get this cord right out of your way. Right. Take a seat. Wait, you guys don't have to put me in the car. I'm gone. There you go, dude. This one. You got anything on you that's going to prod or poke it? No, sir. Right, you go in the hospital or you go in jail. Okay. Interference. I'm sorry. My mom's going to jail too. No, don't say my mom. Come you, on. She was just. I don't give a sh, dude. Okay. You make me tase you, you're going to jail. I didn't mean. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Needless to say, through their actions and attitude, the officers violated their department's use of force policy, which states force must be reasonable based on the situation as evaluated by an officer in similar situations and must be reasonable based on what is known to the officer at the time force was used. Moreover, it's no surprise that their actions also went against their department's core values and mission statement. The statement being, we view the responsibility of the Laramie Police Department as the protection of life and property, the protection of rights of persons, the enforcement of ordinances and regulations, and the preservation of peace, order, and safety. These two are both going to jail. Yep. You know which person you're going which person? What's that? First one hit her. Bay one. Bay one hit her. Okay. Man, where's the other prong? Oh, Back right here. Okay. I'm going to pull these out, okay? Yeah. It's going to hurt. But it's going to be a lot better once again. Ready? All right. 
Yeah. I don't think I can without using my hands. Without uh, using your hands? I'll help you. Ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Is she good to walk? Yeah, she's good. Come on. I can't walk without my shoes. Well, you were happy to fight us without your shoes, so you're going to walk without no, your shoes. Come on. I, listen to Do me. Do you want to go again? It's a medical problem with my foot. See, I had surgery. If I walk, I'll blow out my foot, the bottom of my foot. Do you have a boot or do you have a shoe? I have slippers. Okay. Do you have slippers for her? Yes. Please. Yeah, she's, she's going to jail. He's going to jail. Okay, still got prongs in him. No, I took his prongs out. That's what I was doing down here. She was day one. He was day two, right? We've got your jacket just there. Thank you. We could have made a determination, you know, if you guys had just complied. But now you guys are going to go to jail. This bad car. Uh, yeah, sure. Two seconds, bro. After wrongfully arresting both victims for interfering with an officer, the deputies drove them towards the Laramie County Jail for assessment. I see the cuts now. Yeah. It could have all been done. Yeah, I'm sorry. A lot simpler. Jeez, you do it quite a bit, don't you? You, yeah, you do need some help. I was what else we got? Yeah. I, mean, I guess there's some on this side too. Yeah. Oh, all of it. That's from our scuffle. Yeah, I know. Is that the only place you get yourself, is it? Yeah. All right. You been drinking tonight? No. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, one of you wants to sit on that far one, one of you wants to sit on this. On this one here. You have been arrested before, Devin? How old are you? 26. Have you used any... Like, I'm not going to hem you up here, I promise, right? Have you used any narcotics in the last, like, 24 no, hours? But the, only, the only reason I'm asking is because if you have, these guys can take care of you, okay? Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm clean. All right. How are you doing? So, 
So, you are dressed incorrect. You are dressed incorrect. I haven't got, I haven't been pinned yet. Oh. The 20th. Next month? Yeah. Oh, I thought... So, well, because they're waiting until they uh, promote everybody, so they need to do the lieutenant stuff first. Oh, who's a... Uh, in fact, talk to me on that in a bit. Do what? Talk to me on that in a bit. You got any medical problems, Devin? Uh, my neck. Got, In, uh, my neck has ruptured discs. Okay, we talk to the nurse about that one. Okay. Both of them have been tased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your last name, Devin? Brian. What's your date of birth? 5 right, Where did I get you? This shoulder. Oh. Let's do that again. Where did I where did I get you with the taser? On your side, this side. Okay, I'm going to get a female deputy to take some pictures of you. Okay. Yeah. Um, you realize you're still recording. I know. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll turn it off now. They've got. They're not going to have any. Uh, Unsurprisingly, after being discharged, Mr. Bryant filed a complaint and a lawsuit alleging that the incident violated his Fourth Amendment rights, which protect against unlawful search and seizure. He also mentioned that he had suffered injuries, humiliation, emotional distress, and mental anguish as a result, and had to pay an undisclosed amount of medical expenses. In August, however, two of Mr. Bryant's four initial claims were dismissed by a federal judge. The judge ruled they were tort claims, which have a one-year statute of limitations for legal action in Wyoming. In the end, his federal lawsuit against sheriff deputies Jason Gillett and Ryan Lee was dismissed following a settlement of $10,000. Furthermore, both officers Gillett and Lee are still employed with the Laramie County Sheriff's Office. Next up, we have a case where officers pointed their guns at a civilian, forced him onto the ground, and subsequently killed him because of their negligence. On May 20th, 2019, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, officers were called to an area south of downtown Oklahoma City shortly before 2 p.m. after someone reported that a 42-year-old black man, Derek Scott, was arguing with people and brandishing a gun. The following footage captures the events that transpired. Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir. Go ahead and turn around for me. Go ahead and turn around. Oh, on the way. Yeah. Get down the ground! Get down the ground. I don't care. Okay, well. Get your hands behind your back. Just me, bro. Get your hand out of your pocket. Hold on. Hey. Give me. No. Hey. Okay. Okay. Let's tase you. Okay, got, breathe, I got it. Got this hand. Okay. 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 Oh, I got it. Around. 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 
I'll tell you what. I'm gonna tase you. There you go. Ouch. Ouch, bro. Oh, please, you hurt me. Give me your hand. Man, I will, please. Give me your yeah, hand. hand. Okay. Okay. I can't breathe. I can't breathe, please. Yeah, please. Okay. Give me your hand. He's reaching. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. Stop. Stop oh, resisting now. Oh, Here. Oh, please, please. I can't breathe. I got this on. Oh, God. Baby. Okay. Do you want me to do it? Despite already having Mr. Scott on the ground and mostly detained, the officers continued to apply pressure on his back and stomach, causing him to be incapable of breathing. This was something that he had already stated numerous times, even going as far as shouting it out. As stated in the case law, Lalonde v. County of Riverside 204 F3D 947, if the plaintiff no longer posed a threat when he was lying down under clearly established law, a knee on the back may constitute a meaningful personal intrusion when it causes injury. Moreover, the severity of the injuries that could result from a knee in the back of a prone arrestee could be broken bones or even death. The most common method of death with this technique is restrained asphyxia or positional asphyxia. Additionally, other officers, including any supervisors who were present, could be liable for failing to intervene. By failing to intervene in the officer's excessive use of force, the other deputies present did not uphold their duty to intervene. This is specifically mentioned in their department's 554.70 policy, which states, where officers observe another officer using excessive force and they have a realistic and safe opportunity to stop the other officer from using the excessive force, they should attempt to stop the other officer. There's one in his pocket. I pulled some stuff out. Hey, where's your gun? Hey, quit clawing me! Stop it! He matches match the description of our robbery suspect yesterday. Yeah, that too. He had that hairbrush. Okay. We're gonna have to get another unit to get him in a car. Okay, you can breathe. That's fine. What's your name, man? What's your name? Huh? Gary? Okay. Can you? I, I want you to comply with me, okay? And there will be less problems. You ready? Right? Okay. Good job, guys. You okay? You need him to? No. We're just scratched from. I know, I just make sure because all I saw was y'all fighting him as I was trying to find where you were at. I didn't know which way you went. <sighs> okay, let's check this side. Let's roll, roll over. over to this side, Gary. Roll. Okay, Gary. Due to their negligence and idle talk, the officers were unaware that they were still applying body weight on the victim, which led to him becoming unconscious and unresponsive. As a result of their actions, they violated their department's use of force policy, which states, Officers shall use only the degree of force as permitted by law. The force used must be reasonably necessary based on the totality of the circumstances. Reasonably necessary means all other means to accomplish the desired action have been reasonably exhausted or would be ineffective under the circumstances. Needless to say, the officers also violated Mr. Scott's fourth constitutional right. According to Cornell Law School, all searches and seizures under the Fourth Amendment must be reasonable and no excessive force shall be used. Reasonableness is the ultimate measure of the constitutionality of a search or seizure. Searches and seizures with the warrant must also satisfy the reasonableness requirement. He's acting like he's unconscious. 72, 72, 72. Gary. There you go. There's the gun. Here, here. here. <laughs> I got it. Right in the pocket, he said. And then said, he's acting like he's unconscious. 
bring him over here. His daughter's a supervisor. I'll go yesterday, a Viper. I'm almost 100% certain. I'm glad you got those legs. I was debating. I was like, do I want to tackle him? Like, oh, that. yeah. You didn't want to. I got it. Yeah, they're on the way. 72, you send a lieutenant this way. There's more hard count. My camera bent. Yeah. It's worthless. I know. I saw that. It just popped off. All right, let's finish checking him and get him okay. in more of a recovery position. So if he well, is. Oh, it's not so Right. You already got the other side right. This is good then. Yeah, hit me with my flashlight. I didn't know who it was. Probably my phone. Is that my phone, yeah. Is it? No, the I, your camera. Uh, maybe no, my this is in my this is the phone I just. Uh, no, this is the phone I pulled out of his pocket. Okay, it was out of his arm. Okay. That's yours? Yep, and your face is there. Are so worthless. My mind breaks every time I get in use of force. Get on his side a little bit more. But it's. I'll hold this leg down, oh. but we need to get his knee like a little bit bent so that if he is not faking, check his boots. I checked that one. Pull out. Oh, see, like, I didn't see that. I was like, that has to be him, but that was probably our victim. Those are, yeah, he couldn't, he didn't have time. I saw the Tacoma pull out. And oh, I was see, like, I didn't see that. I was like, that has to be him, but that was probably our victim. Those are, call, yeah, he was probably robbing him. No, leave it going. No, leave it going. He knocked him passed out. Stay with us, man. Yeah, he's pretty good. Okay. He's not really. He's fine. No? Hey. Where's Fire Nymphs are usually here. He's got a pulse, he's breathing. Yeah. Well, you wanted to chase and get nasty and muddy. Though he may have still had a pulse, the officers were required to make sure the victim was healthy and out of harm's way until he was no longer in their custody. This is because, according to the United Nations Human Rights Office, law enforcement officials shall ensure the full protection of the health of persons in their custody and, in particular, shall take immediate action to secure medical attention whenever required. By continuing to sit on him and not employing immediate resuscitation procedures to bring the victim's consciousness back, the officers violated this human rights law. Thankfully though, medics arrived on the scene after receiving a brief call about the situation. Over there. I don't think, I don't think so. Okay, what? you can stay right there as long as you stay back, you're good. Okay. Hey, he's not responding too well, so. He, uh, he ran from us from about my scout car right there to here. We tackled him, wrestled him for a while. He wanted to give us his hands and then he, about the time we got handcuffs on and found the gun, he decided he was unconscious, so. No, he hasn't been tased, nothing like that. He wasn't pepper spray. But he, he was fighting pretty good. Uh, he does a little bit. As soon as I mentioned he was a robbery suspect, I'm pretty sure he glitches a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he may not be faking, but he reeks of weed, and that's about it. You want this off of him? Yeah, if you can. Well, maybe not. It's on the other okay. arm. Okay. Sit up. There you go. Do we have a name? Derek. Derek, what's going on? Yeah. The foot chase and the gun on him, she didn't see that part. That's his family. family. She pulled up because he was laid on the ground and we were holding him down. Yeah. 
you get an ID from? Yeah. The foot chase and the gun on him, she didn't see that part. That's probably road rash from this curb. He didn't hit his head though. Uh, oh, yeah. He does uh, like yeah. Derek, what's going on? <laughs> what she said? She said, "Oh, you guy, I got it in." She says, "Thanks for that." No, hey, hey, Titus, come here. No, she's cool. Stop, 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 stop. She's cool. She's leaving. Hey, 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 hey. I didn't want you to go over there and get all riled up. She's like, oh, that's what he did? Oh, he's good. I'm out. Oh, okay. So. Hey, stop it. It's going to be hard to get a uh, reading. Hey. This may just be a wrestling. Quit fighting. Quit. Fighting. Quit. Quit. Quit! That's Destiny getting a use of force today. Seriously, third time's their charm. Quit! 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 Quit fighting! Quit. Well, he's got the wits enough to spit the grass out of his mouth. We need him checked out. He's under arrest. So we can't check for him like this. Okay, we're going game on there. Then you got a custom. Put him on that ship. Can't be Cody Hyde for that. Well, we'll get him up there. We'll get him up there for us. Derek. 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 Wait. Hey, hey, listen. Derek, listen. We're going to put you up there on the IMSA cot, okay? So we can get you to the hospital, all right? Okay? So you got to help us out a little bit, all right? We're going to stand you up. Don't fight. I oh, know he had a gun on him. He had what? He had a gun. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Whoa. Whoa. No. Hey. Whoa. See, I like her. <laughs> I just don't want him to kick you. You got his leg, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to push him up. Slide him up if you can. I got it. Alright. Alright. So she said she needs. You got to put him in. Yep. I got it. I got it. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. We got to Oh. Mm. Mm. Baby. Oh. Mm. There he goes. I'm not going to the while the medics and officers were placing Mr. Scott on a stretcher, another deputy arrived on the scene with an individual who claimed that he witnessed the events prior to the police's arrival. Yeah, the calling party didn't said that she didn't want anything. She wouldn't even look back over because she was scared. Okay. The Tacoma 
They said he was talking to left right as we pulled in. Well, I can get his information as a witness, but he said he didn't see a gun. But he I said didn't see no gun. the guy tried to purchase tacos, I guess, with like a fake 20, and then she got mad and was like, hey, it's fake. Get the money back, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then yeah, just get his info, because I know you guys sat there and watched us chase him and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, we watched it. Because I, they described a black male wearing a black hoodie, so I split the difference. Because he's darker complexion than this guy. Yeah, I, I split the difference. I was like, I don't know which one to go to. I heard that, and I was like, Are you? Because I, they described a black male wearing a black hoodie, so I split the difference. Because he's darker complexion than this guy. Yeah, I, I split the difference. I was like, I don't know which one to go to. I heard that, and I was like, Are you? Run it and run him on the hood of Titus's car. Unfortunately, because of the lack of help received by the victim prior to the medic's arrival, Mr. Scott was later pronounced dead at a local hospital. An autopsy obtained by NBC News listed his cause of death as a collapsed lung. The autopsy said the police response did not result in fatal trauma and listed several other significant factors that contributed to his death, including physical restraint, recent methamphetamine use, asthma, emphysema, and heart disease. Despite this, Oklahoma City Police Captain Larry Withrow said an investigation into the incident by the Oklahoma County District Attorney's Office cleared the three officers, Tipton, Ashley Copeland, and Sergeant Jennifer Titus, of misconduct. Local activists and Mr. Scott's relatives challenged authorities on this. As of the date of this recording, though, no further updates have been made to this case. Moving on, we have an incident where officers tased and placed an innocent elderly man in a chokehold, resulting in his untimely death. In October 2017, around the Royals Parish, Louisiana, an officer approached a 44-year-old man, Armando Frank, who was sitting atop his tractor in a Walmart parking lot. The reason for this was due to the farmer having a warrant for simple criminal trespassing and attempted unauthorized entry into a dwelling. He reportedly had a dispute with his neighbors and had been similarly charged before in 2016, but was given court-ordered Veterans Affairs treatment instead of being prosecuted by the district attorney's office. As for how this current encounter went, though, it could only be described as unfortunate. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mr. Frank. My name's Sergeant Daniel with the Bulls Bay Sheriff's Office. How you doing, boss? Alright. Uh, do you mind if I talk to you real quick? First of all, you got an ID so I know who I'm talking to? I can't take your word for it. I gotta make sure. Alrighty, appreciate it, man. I understand you're a veteran. Both of us are, too. Do you mind uh, coming on down and talk to us over here real quick? I need to talk to you over here real quick. I need you to get off the tractor, sir. You're coming off the tractor, Mr. Frank. Get off the tractor. Get off the tractor. Mr. Frank, I have a warrant for your arrest. I don't know what the warrant's for, but I do have a warrant for your arrest. What was that warrant? It's at the sheriff's office. We can discuss it when we get there. Let's look in. We are going to see it. What? You're coming with me to see it. I'm not leaving the tractor. Get off the tractor, sir. Okay. Who sent the warrant? I'm sorry? Who sent the warrant? I don't know who signed the warrant. Yeah, it's why at, would you have a warrant for me? It's at the office. We can take a look at it when we get there. I'm not the one oh, who got the warrant made. Now, what warrant would you have? Mr. Frank, the warrant's at the office. We'll see it when we get there. What warrant would you have? Show me one. It's at the office. I'll show, show it to me you when one. we get there. Don't have it with me. No, you can't arrest me. Yes, sir, I can't. No, you need to show me a warrant. Get off the tractor. Show me a warrant. Step off the tractor. Ah, uh, sir. Step off the tractor. Step off of the tractor, we're going to take you. Get off the tractor. Step off of the tractor. You don't have no warrant. Step off of the tractor. Show me a warrant. Mr. Frank. It's confirmed? Yeah. No, it ain't. Get off the tractor, Mr. Frank. Get off of the tractor now. You don't have no warrant. Get off the tractor, dude. Get the f off. Get off the tractor. 
fart out of his face. Get up! God damn it! Alright, I was kidding. Taser deployed. God damn it, get it! Get off the tractor! Now! Although one may argue that the use of a taser may have been justified, the officer forgot to do one very important thing. According to the ACLU's taser policy, officers will, if feasible, give the subject a verbal warning before using the taser. The warning should be an explicit statement such as stop, get on the ground, or you will be tased. Officers will also announce to cover officers that the taser is being deployed whenever possible. By not giving out a verbal warning, however, the officer violated this policy and was therefore liable of using excessive force in detaining the victim. This is crucial to note since excessive force violates the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which forbids unreasonable searches and seizures by law enforcement. Oh, God damn it! Stop, stop, stop. At this moment, one can see that the deputy behind Mr. Frank was placing the driver in a chokehold, a subjugation technique that is considered illegal in many states. According to Stanford Law School, their SCRJ model policy defines chokeholds as lethal hands-on maneuvers that may cut off the supply of blood and oxygen to the brain, and includes under this definition strangleholds, neck restraints, and carotid restraints. Any and all chokeholds are prohibited under the policy. Moreover, in the chokeholds chapter, the model policy also outlines directives and prohibitions on breathing impairments. These breathing impairments include strikes to the neck and positional asphyxia, the face-down position most notoriously used by Officer Derek Chauvin against George Floyd. With regards to this policy, it's very clear that the officer violated this in its full form. By doing so, he, as previously done before, violated the victim's fourth constitutional right via excessive force. Furthermore, it's important to note that the third officer present did nothing to stop his peers from using such egregious methods of subjugation. As a result, he could be held liable for violating his department's duty to intervene policy, which states, when a law enforcement officer uses excessive force or engages in other prohibited conduct, other officers on the scene have a duty to stop such action. Tempo, we're still fighting. Get off the tractor, now! Ah! Get off the track, Mr. Frank. Hey, you are doing this, Bash? Doing that? Where's your other location? All of our guys. One more parking lot. Three uses of taser. Hit him with a paper, get him. Hit him. Yeah, problem. One day, Sheriff's office headed to Walmart. Come on, Mr. Frank, move your leg. Get off the tractor. <laughs> Are you on his other leg? No. <laughs> I got his shoulders, good. Stop fighting this, you're making it worse. Why not? Still trying to get him off the track. I got a wolf out of the dirt. Man, it's a parking lot on the side of the building. You ain't got no damn work for the rest. Everybody's on the side of the building. 10 4. When you come into the parking lot, head straight left down the furthest lane on the side. Careful, get it back there. 
subject isn't actively fighting anymore, but we still can't get him moved. You want to help us out of the tower service? You want to go to the tower service? 10 4. The opposite side is the tower service. Leave you out. Leave you out. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, violated the SCRJ model policy once more by putting an excessive amount of strain and force on the victim's back and neck, despite already being detained. Further proof of this not being allowed is when a police chief in Louisiana, Thomas Morse Jr., when asked whether it was proper procedure for officers to put their knees on a victim, replied, it is not. We do not train to put knees anywhere near the neck, on the front, or back. <laughs> Get him up. Come on, dude, I'll fight you. He's there waiting. Yeah, he's, he's there waiting. Where the head goes, the bottom of the when considering the use of their knees in dragging the victim on the floor, it's obvious that the officers were severely endangering the victim and could be considering to have used deadly force. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, law enforcement officers and correctional officers may use deadly force only when the officer has a reasonable belief that the subject of such force poses an imminent danger of death or serious physical injury to the officer or to another person. It must also be noted that, one, deadly force may not be used solely to prevent the escape of a fleeing suspect. Two, a verbal warning to submit to authority of the officer shall be given prior to the use of deadly force. Three, officers will be trained in alternative methods and tactics for handling resisting subjects, which must be used when the use of deadly force is not authorized by this policy. Four, deadly force should not be used against persons whose actions are a threat solely to themselves or property, unless an individual poses an imminent danger of death or serious physical injury to the officer or others in close proximity. By being unable to handle the situation differently, despite it being possible, the officers violated this policy. Okay. Right here, right here. Wait a minute. No, Yeah, I'm good. Why not? Break one on one dispatch with Tyson. 10 on 20. 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 There's a Cadian in route, bro. Hit him up. No, no. Hit him up. I think that the wire got wrapped around my arm. Oh. 
Like, what, 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 what's going on? He's got a warrant. Yeah, he's got a warrant. <clears throat> he's on the tractor. So I get him on the tractor. He wasn't coming off of it. Who's the tractor? It's sir, him. It's his. They started pulling off the tractor. He started fighting. Who is it? Uh, Armando Frank. Oh. Remember the guy whose gate I ran over? Say something. The what? The guy, the dead guy whose gate I ran over? We were still figuring out he was dead. That's his son. Unfortunately, after the incident, Mr. Frank died after succumbing to his injuries. According to the advocate, pathologist Christopher Tape found Mr. Frank's death to be a homicide for medicological purposes and stated that the officers compromised his breathing for more than six minutes by using chokeholds and leaning on his back. Dr. Tape also said that the officers didn't try to resuscitate the victim. Despite this, in March, a Novellus Parish grand jury declined to indict the officers involved with the negligent homicide charges. In response, Mr. Frank's family filed a civil rights lawsuit against Sheriff's deputies Brandon Spillman, Alexander Daniel, and Marksville police officer Kenneth Parnell in federal district court in July 2018. As of the date of this recording, though, there has still been no development in this case. Our final case involves officers beating and unlawfully arresting an elderly man who they assumed was a squatter without reasonable evidence. On November 29, 2022, in Ogden, Utah, a 78-year-old homeowner, Rand Bream, and a 74-year-old wife, Vera, were pulling out of their driveway to run an errand when they were suddenly met by officers from the local police department. The officers were responding to the home due to a report of potential squatter activity as a neighbor reportedly complained that someone was living in a home that was foreclosed. The following footage shows the events that transpired. Hey. What can I do for you, sir? So are you guys supposed to be here? You're supposed to be where? This house. Our <laughs> kid just came from the garage. Your kid came from the garage. I just came from the garage. Yeah, is this your residence? Yeah, that's my house. That's my garage. Okay, you... What, what, what are you doing? We got a complaint that this house was foreclosed on? No, the house isn't foreclosed on. All right. You guys mind hanging tight for a second? Well, I've got to go. Where you got to go? With that? What difference does that Disclosed make? Disclosed occupancy. Go. So yeah, you guys should not be here. What do you mean I should? So be? there's a closed to occupancy. I was back in the back. Well, for this property. No, it doesn't Closed say that. Yes, it does. It's on the front door. Our partner just told me that. Hey, shut your car off. No. We need to get this settled. No. Sir. You're trespassing. No. Get out of the car. Come up. Come up. Out of the car. Now, what's with you? We're getting what down to what's going on here, all right? We got a I, call. I am leaving. I've got a place to go. Hey, it doesn't matter. We got this to take care of right now. What, what is this? Where's, am I under it? arrest? No, sir. Am I, uh, uh, then am I free to go? No, you are not free to go. You are detained right now. We're trying to investigate. If I'm so, not under what is arrest, your name? I'm free to go. No, you are not. You are detained right now for investigation. For what? Ma'am. What investigation? For hell's sake, you dumb If you stop yelling, I'm trying to explain to you. We got a complaint from the neighbor that his house has been foreclosed on. No one should be here. It has You not guys been, are here. It and there is a no occupancy sign on the door as per my partner there. Regarding the no occupancy sign, it was later revealed that the health department posted it there for the home's basement over a chemical contamination issue. The notice only applied to the basement and so the Breams were living in their home's detached garage at the time of the incident. Since the officer failed to gather enough evidence on the matter, his detainment of the elderly man was unjust and unlawful. Uh, there is a sign on the door. So, And what makes you think I've been in there? That's the property, no trespassing. Yes, that's my sign I put up. 
So you're the owner of this property? I am. What is your name? You got a driver's license on you. I do. Can I get that from you? I'm not driving. You were just driving. I not on I the need street. to. Sir, ma'am, I need you to stand over there. You need to identify yourself. Ma'am, stand over there. Ma'am, 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 that's fine. Stand over here. Okay? I, I understand that. I need you to stand over here. You don't know that. If this was your house, you would want us to investigate, right? If people are hanging around your house, maybe you're some random person. I don't know that. Maybe I am. Okay, so we're going to figure that out. I will show you my driver's license. Perfect. I will not give it to you. There it is. Your name, your date of birth, and your address. You, I, sir. Hey. I told you I wasn't giving it to you. He is well, I just hell. Hell. He is hell. He is hell. No, they're not. He is hell. Hey, 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 According to Brown, Bradshaw, and Moffitt, of the things law enforcement may ask, you are required to comply with the following. 1. Show a valid driver's license. 2. Show proof of insurance. 3. Share your proper registration. Additionally, refusing to take a chemical test can result in the suspension of your driving privileges. You must comply with that request. However, nowhere does it state that an officer is allowed to take someone's license unless placed under arrest for DUI. As a result of this action and their failure to de-escalate the situation, the officers unlawfully used force to detain Mr. Bream, who had not yet committed any violent acts. Furthermore, his aggressive attitude and words were not enough to be considered probable cause for the officers to arrest him. This is because he was protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Let go of him! I'm not grabbing you! I got I'm done! You son of a Get away right now. Back or you will be arrested. He is dead. Get back or you will be arrested right now. Get in front of your car. Come now. On, hurry up. Let me out of here. Good sir. Tell me I can't breathe. You got me. You do something. You get up or something. Help me up. Roll on your side. There you go. Let's get him up. I'm gonna get you on your knees and stand you up. All right. One, two, three. Stand, stand up, sir. Up. Okay, you got my yeah. driver's license. You know why? I am. Yeah. Come on. What are we gonna do? We're coming out this way. Coming out this down. way. May I sit down, please? What's that? I don't know. May I sit down? No. I'm an old man. Okay. You have a seat right here. Yeah. Now, what is it you want? During his arrest, Mr. Bream's rotator cuff was torn and was also left with some bruising, cuts, and emotional distress. The couple filed their lawsuit in U.S. District Court against the Ogden Police Department and the two arresting officers, 
arguing that their constitutional rights were violated over the arrest. Their lawsuit against the department did not specify the dollar amount they were seeking in damages. Instead, they were asking for general compensatory, special, and punitive damages. The suit also argued that Vera Bream suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder due to the incident. In the end, the victim was ultimately charged with interfering with an arresting officer, according to the Ogden Police Department. Unfortunately, as of the date of this recording, his case is still pending in court. Be sure to check out our previous video, where we cover another outrageous police encounter.